Hey there, it's Ben Housel, and in this tutorial we're gonna be having a look at how we get animated GIFs onto the Final Cut Pro 10 timeline. Now we're gonna be using the OSM importer that's available from FX Factory uh, to do this, and basically, this is gonna make your importing of animated GIFs uh, super quick, um, super easy. The OSM importer also imports um, other things to the timeline as well. So if you like these types of tutorials or tutorial reviews, then please do hit the subscribe button and the notifications button. Uh, but without further ado, let's dive in and have a look at how we get animated GIFs onto the timeline in Final Cut Pro 10. So let's dive in and have a look at how we get animated GIFs onto our timeline in Final Cut Pro 10. We're gonna have a look at the completely free way uh, to begin with, and then we'll have a look at how the OSM importer can add some functionality and really useful tools like looping your animated GIF onto your timeline as well. So first things first, we're gonna jump back into our web browser, and you need to go to a site where you can actually download uh, the animated GIFs by right-clicking on them and saving that image. That's kind of the easiest way to do it. So I've done a search for surfer here on giphy.com, and we're gonna click on one of these images. And then once we're on the page um, for the animated GIF, we can right-click on it, and we need to go to this option, save image as, and that's basically gonna save that image onto our computer, and then we can drop it into the timeline in Final Cut Pro 10. So if we hit this, we'll call this Surfer. And now we can go to our finder. So we can see I've got a few different animated GIFs, kind of classic ones that you've seen um, on the desktop here, and we're gonna drop these into Final Cut Pro 10. So First things first, let's just bring up Final Cut Pro in the background and the Finder at the same time. And I'm just using the Command key and Tab to move around my applications here. So we can grab these three images and we can drop them into our event here in our library. So we have these three animated GIFs, okay? And if we highlight them, we can come up to the info in the inspector and we'll kind of see a little bit of information about the animated GIF. Um, and the duration of it and that type of thing. So let's drop a video onto our timeline first of all, just so we've got something to put our animated GIF over the top of. The animated GIFs won't be very high resolution normally, so normally we'd use them to add some color, a little bit of fun uh, to your video. And just so we can see the animated GIFs that we're adding on top here, I'm gonna also just come to my color effects on the right hand side, and we'll just colorize this image in the background um, so that we have a bit of a tint to it. So we'll add a little bit of a magenta and yellow tint to it. And then we'll, we'll increase the intensity of this just so we've got a kind of nice, almost duotone image. So basically to add an animated GIF um, to the timeline, we can drag it down and it will play back on your timeline. Now, there's a couple things to think about here when you're just dropping um, animated GIFs onto the timeline. The first is that they won't uh, loop automatically like they do in the web browser. You actually need to kind of set that up yourself. So here also, um, the scale has been scaled up to fit, which means that if we go to view at 100%, we're gonna get a really rough edge uh, to the animated GIF here. So what I would normally do, and animated GIFs are normally a bit rough anyway around the edges, uh, but what I would normally do is select the animated GIF on the timeline come down to the spatial conform and just turn off the fit. So change that fit option to none. And that means you'll get the animated GIF um, at the size it was created at. So now we can grab that animated GIF, grab our transform options here and move this around um, to wherever we want it to be. I'll turn my transform options off here. So we have Snoop dancing in the corner there and we can set this up so we can grab this, hold down the Alt key and duplicate this along the timeline. So let's just zoom in a little bit here. And we wanna make sure these are side by side so we can group these together and duplicate them again. And eventually we can kind of build up a nice loop um, for that animated GIF. But what will happen is you'll end up with a lot of clips kind of running along your timeline. So now we'll go ahead and have a look at how we do this with the OSM importer and some of the advantages of working that way. So we'll grab our generators and titles up here on the top left, and then we're gonna scroll down. In fact, we'll just close up the titles and we'll come down to our OSM importers. So we're gonna grab the GIF importer from here and drag it down to the timeline. 
And basically this generator asks us to import uh, an image or connect to an image um, and we can select a GIF location here. So we'll grab a GIF from our desktop. We'll grab the Niancat GIF. And you can see here, we automatically have it at the scale it was designed at. So we don't, we're not increasing the scale of it, although we can. So we have some nice on-screen controllers to increase the size of it. And we can also rotate it um, easily here on screen. And then we have some options down the bottom um, here as well. So basically we can select the GIF location. Um, we can also, which will change the GIF that we're actually putting on. That's the same function that we're doing up here. We can change whether we want it to loop or ping pong. Um, and so what will happen here basically is that when we extend out the GIF importer generator on the timeline, it's going to automatically uh, loop for us. So basically we don't have to go through that process of copying and pasting uh, things to kind of make them loop over a longer period of time. This is much easier to set up. So let's pause that for the moment. Um, up in the inspector, we also have some options for uh, easing in and easing out. So we can make the GIF accelerate um, as it kind of plays back. And then we also have some options for uh, flipping it, flopping it, so changing the direction of it. Um, so for instance, if we use uh, a new GIF importer, let's grab this one. We will change to a different GIF, so we'll grab Snoop again. So if we want to have over here a Snoop on the left, hold down the Alt key to duplicate, drag up, and then we can flop this and we can have a snoop on the right. They're both in the same position, so now we've quickly set that up um, so that we have those animated GIFs looping without any kind of copying and pasting. So it's a real time saver if you're using these types of effects um, in your videos. Um, we also have some options if we come back to this previous uh, GIF. In fact, I'm gonna delete this one and we'll add a new GIF importer. We'll select a new location and we're gonna choose the surfer here. Okay, we'll increase the size of this a little bit. So we'll pop this across the right um, and we can change uh, the cropping of this. So we can crop this from the top and bottom. We can crop the width and we can also round off the corners as well, which is quite a nice feature of this um, plugin as well. So basically we have a few different controls um, that we don't have when we drop a regular GIF um, into our edit. So if you're looking for something that's really gonna save you time because you're using a lot of these graphics or looping graphics um, in your edit, um, then the OSM importers will really help. Having said that, obviously you can set it up for free by just dragging the clips onto the timeline, which is new, older versions of Final Cut Pro um, didn't actually do this um, and you had to find a different way of importing the GIF into your older version of Final Cut Pro, but now it just accepts the GIFs natively um, straight onto the timeline. So hopefully that's been useful, um, useful overview of how to import animated GIFs and how to make a, a basic loop um, and then also how to use the OSM importer to import an animated GIF and then kind of take control over how things are set up. If you have any questions about Final Cut Pro, then please do leave them in the comments below. If you have any questions about importing animated GIFs, then also leave them below. And I look forward to seeing you on the next tutorial.